My name is Mark McEwen, 9th and 10th grade ENL teacher. This video is for students who want to practice their note taking with lectures. So if you haven't watched it yet, please watch the three ways to improve note taking video first, and that will tell you the basics of note taking. So let's review our basic note taking symbols and abbreviations. The purpose of these symbols and abbreviations is to help us write more concise notes. We want our notes to be short and to help us write faster notes. So here we have a backslash to represent our prepositions such as in, at, and on, but also our comma. We can use an equal sign to represent the different forms of the verb be, like is, are, and am. And we're gonna use an equal sign with a slash through it to represent the negative forms of be, is not, are not. We're gonna use a plus sign for and, b backslash c for because, an arrow pointing to the side for so, causes, leads to, results in, an arrow pointing up, for increases more most, arrow pointing down, for decreases less, fewer, least, a delta or triangle for change, and an EX with a colon for, for example. We're also going to organize our ideas with a general topic, and then main ideas in the lecture, and then supporting details. Supporting details are written as notes, so we have our dotted lines. This is to remind us that these are not complete sentences. These need to be in note form. So we're gonna start with a butterfly lecture. So while you are listening to this, you are only going to listen one time. That way it recreates what it's like in a lesson when a teacher is talking or giving a lecture. So no rewinding or pausing this time. Just listen to it one time and take notes using keywords and phrases from the lecture. So to help you out this time, we're gonna give you the topic, which is butterflies, and the main idea, which is the life cycle. So make sure you write those down now. So let's do the lecture. The life cycle of a butterfly is short, but interesting. A mother butterfly lays her eggs on plants. She chooses plants that her babies can eat for food. Butterfly eggs only take a few weeks, a few days or weeks to hatch. Baby caterpillars are tiny when they are first born. Caterpillars do nothing but eat and grow. Some grow to full size within a week. Others can take up to a year. When the caterpillar reaches full size, it finds a safe place and attaches itself to a branch. Its skin comes off and under the old skin is a new hard skin called a chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar is turning into a butterfly. Sometimes this takes a week but it can take up to eight months. The caterpillar has changed into a butterfly. It is ready to fly away, lay more eggs, and start the cycle all over again. So let's take a look at the notes for this lecture. So again, we have our topic, butterflies, main idea, life cycle. Now, all of our supporting details are supporting that main idea of the life cycle. We shouldn't include anything that doesn't support that main idea. So we have lays eggs on plants so that babies have food, days to weeks for eggs to hatch, caterpillars are tiny and only eat and grow for a week to a year, make chrysalis on safe branch and change to butterfly in one week to eight months. So your notes don't need to look exactly like this, but it should have these same ideas. So let's look at another example of what these notes could look like. So we have short, so that's in reference to the life cycle, a short life cycle. Lays eggs on plants so that babies eat. Hatch in one to two days, tiny. Job is eat and grow for one week to one year. Full size leads to attached to brants, leads to chrysalis, leads to butterfly in one week to eight months. Notice how we have abbreviations here for weeks, years, and months. Ready to fly and repeat cycle. So you'll notice these notes are different from the first set, but they contain the same information. So let's try another practice lecture with phones in school. So this time you're again only going to listen one time and you're still going, uh, but now you're going to identify the main ideas. So before we gave them to you, but here you should be able to identify them yourself. You're going to also listen for signal words. These are words that tell you that the teacher is moving on to a new idea or a new topic within the lecture. 
and you're going to take notes again using those keywords and phrases. So don't forget to identify those main ideas and take notes that support those main ideas. And notice here our solid straight line that goes through our main ideas to separate them. Okay, let's do the lecture. Allowing students to have phones in school is still a big discussion. Supporters of cell phones in the classroom believe that the numerous benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Some teachers argue that allowing students to have their phones makes them more independent learners. They are able to answer any question they may have or define any word without needing to ask the teacher. Additionally, students have access to tons of resources to enhance learning. These include videos that explain an unfamiliar topic or show a new skill, or music that may help students focus in a noisy environment. Furthermore, having cell phones in the classroom also helps teachers to improve their tech skills. Many teachers are unfamiliar with the numerous benefits that technology and education can bring, and teachers can learn a lot from their students using their phones in innovative ways. Finally, when students have their cell phones, they are able to contact their parents during the day. This can be helpful if there is a change in plans or if there is an emergency. However, there are many critics that disagree and believe that in spite of the benefits, there are stronger negative effects of allowing students to have cell phones in class. One of the biggest arguments about allowing phones in school is the fact that they can easily distract students. Students are constantly getting texts and notifications that distract them from schoolwork and interacting with other people face to face. As well, students have access to inappropriate content that's on the internet. When students use school computers and tablets, there are safeguards in place to block against inappropriate websites. However, when students use personal devices, they have access to everything that the internet has to offer, both the good and the bad. In addition, when students have their phones in school, the possibility of cyberbullying increases. When students constantly have access to social media, there is more opportunity to bully other students or become the victim of bullying themselves. This type of bullying is much more difficult for teachers and administration to monitor. Last, when phones are permitted in schools, it can widen the gap between privileged and underprivileged students. Many students' family can afford to buy them a nice phone, which they can use while they are at school. But that is not true for all students. Underprivileged students may not have access to a phone, which means students from wealthier families continue to have more advantages than students from poor families. Whether you are for or against allowing phones in school, there are many reasons that the issue is up for debate. Okay, so let's take a look at the notes for this lecture. So here I have the main ideas as benefits and drawbacks. Your main ideas don't need to be this exactly. Maybe you have pros and cons, or maybe you have something like positives and negatives, as long as you have the idea that phones can be good and phones can be bad. So let's look at the supporting details for benefits. Students are independent because can answer questions and define words without help. Access to content, for example, videos and music. Teachers can learn tech skills from students. Students can contact parents when change plans or emergency. And then for drawbacks, distract students because of texts and notifications, access to inappropriate content on internet, cyberbullying increases because difficult to monitor, and finally, privileged students with phones benefit, but students without phones don't. So let's look at an alternate version of these same notes. Remember, same content, but the notes are written differently. So here the main ideas are positives and negatives. This isn't wrong, this is just a different way to write it. So increased independence, for example, find answers on phone and access resources. Music leads to increased focus. Increased teacher tech skills. Students can contact parents in emergency. And for the negatives, distracting, for example, texts and notifications. Access to inappropriate content personal devices with no so, uh, safeguards, increased possibility for cyberbullying, and a widened gap regarding privilege and less privilege. So you can see different way to write the notes, but still the same ideas as the first set of notes. 
So hopefully this note-taking practice with lectures will help you out. Think about different ways you can practice your note-taking when you're listening in real life. Again, my name is Mark McEwen.